Hi, guys and girls. This is uh, Gary Bowler, uh, also known as Magpie, and you're watching Slash of Pepper. Enjoy. <laughs> hey, guys, Slash of Pepper, and welcome to another interview. Today, I'm going to be interviewing Gary Bowler. How are you doing? Yeah, fine, thanks. Thank you. Yeah, technical problems, but we're here now, so that's good. For sure, that's yeah. all that matters. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, so I was curious, of course, you had the new single just out. Uh, besides that, do you have any other new projects coming up? Uh, yeah, I'm currently working with Satan's Empire, which is a heavy metal band. Uh, we're just, we just started rehearsing again. Uh, now, uh, we've got a bit more leeway with the lockdown. Uh, we are about seven or eight songs into a, a new album. Uh, just before just as the lockdown happened last year march we had an album released through uh through uh dissonance the dissonance label um distributed uh through plastic head so uh that got released in march then obviously the pandemic hit and uh, we were affected so we haven't yet yeah. toured that album uh and we have another album which we almost uh ready to record so we've got two albums to promote eventually <laughs> fantastic awesome yeah, yeah. Mm. um and then uh my question was uh who are some of your favorite drummers oh favorite drummers um i i would say my roots really are in uh a lot a lot of, a lot of the english drummers from the sort of uh era where we had the likes of uh led zeppelin so we got john bonham uh, we've got Ian Pace from Deep Purple. Uh, we've got Bill Ward from Black Sabbath. Uh, all, all the kind of classic bands. Uh, Brian Downey from Thin Lizzy. Yeah. Uh, awesome. Keith Moon, obviously. Uh, so a wide range of, a lot of English drummers, because that's that's the kind of uh, thing I grew up with, you know. And the right. new wave of metal at the time. So, yeah. Would you but say these are also, would you say these are also some of your, uh, like inspirations i would say i take a lot from uh, a lot of those players yeah i mean right. brian downey for instance uh finn lizzie drummer he has such a really great swing to his playing it's very diff difficult to replicate uh but it's fantastic swing to his playing uh the likes of ian pace for instance very very much a, a swing player as well uh but very powerful uh and uh, yeah, he's just incredible players, and I think I think as a, as a player yourself, you do take on board a lot of their ways of playing, and you, you kind of develop your own way of interpreting uh, uh, those players as individuals you know, within it. I don't know that was that nonsense. Sorry, I just got a thing pop up. Um, so within all that, you will get um, your own style of developing. Right. Uh, but there's a lot of influences within within that uh, from growing up. So, yeah, I should imagine. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so yeah, it, it's about influences and soaking up that information, and then developing your own style. Uh, which right. sets it apart from anyone else again. But, yeah. Oh, Buddy Rich, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Obviously, big band drummers are very influential as well, like Buddy Rich, uh, you know, uh, incredible technical uh, proficiency. Uh, a lot of those early jazz players and a lot of the big band players, incredible players, they influence the, the rock generation from the, the Sabbaths and the Zeppelins, you know, and in turn, they, they, they influence new, the newer uh, generation. So it has a knock on effect and uh, it's a uh, drumming's changed a massive amount in, in uh, uh, the last sort of 80 years, you know, from, from the early, early birth of the drum set through to uh, the modern day. Yeah. Incredible technical play. Yeah. It's incredible. Some of those players, they're, they're astonishing, you know, sure. what they can do with the four limbs. Anyway, not my style. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, yeah, it's a good question. Yeah, and what are some of, uh, I can imagine, you know, some of the drummers you mentioned, um, they play in some of your favorite bands. So what are some of mm. your favorite bands? 
Yeah. Um, well, as, as I say, I, I grew up with a lot of the sort of English rock bands. So the Zeppelins, the Deep Purples, um, you know, obviously Cozy Power was a huge influence because I was around about 11 years old when he had his uh, singles out in the 70s. Uh, so he was a major influence. And um, he, he was a person who, because he had some solo releases uh, and on top of the Pops, which is a, a popular UK program at the time, uh, that was something that inspired me to, to uh, want to get better playing drums when I was that age. So he was a big influence. Band-wise, I've always liked the Zeppelins and the Purples and the Sabbaths, you know, uh, the incredible bands. And those bands uh, won't come around again. So, oh, you, know, uh, it, <laughs> you know, it's, uh, we're, we're at that tail end of a lot of those artists, unfortunately. But uh, yeah. some, of the new, some of the new bands, well, you know, yeah, yeah losing Santana. a lot of the old guard. Santana. Santana. Yeah, I do like Santana. I'm getting prompted by the by the wife at the minute. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Santana, a, a great band. I grew up with them as well, you know, from the uh, Santana third album. And I just think their interplay with the percussionists are incredible, you know. Uh, so, so yeah, a lot, a lot of uh, prog, prog uh, drummers as well in like Mahavishnu Orchestra, uh, Billy Cobham, them kind of players, you know incredible players but uh yeah band wise i do like um i like uh some of them the the newer bands um i, do, I like thorium they i think they're from uh, holland i think the thorium from holland i'm sure they are um great great guys as well uh I like gang uh kind of new wave band from um france very good band um titan the new wave of British heavy metal band. So there's a lot, lots of good bands out there currently, you know, from that scene still, uh, which I do like. I like the, I like the hard rock and the metal stuff, you know. Awesome. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then here's a sort of a philosophical question: uh, If you ruled yeah. the world, what would the world look yeah. like? What would it look like? Yeah, that's a good, very good question. What would the world look like? How would it operate? You mean? Yeah. Um, yeah, I just, I just think, um, I just think people will be accepted for who who they are. You know, I think there'd be more tolerance, and uh, I would just ask that people just got on with their lives and stop um, wanting to be put into pigeonholes and bracketed. You know, uh, there's a lot of like the transgender things and you know black lives and all that it's very important but i don't think it's necessary i think all that's happening is is putting people in in uh in in, in areas uh to be then targets to be honest mm. with you i think yeah. people should just forget about all yeah. that and just get on be with being human beings at the end of the day because that's all we are you know we don't need to be labeled people just need to get on with it with each other it's very simple yeah, that's definitely one similar. thing. Yeah. That's yeah. definitely one thing, you know, that would change if I ruled the world. So I agree with you on that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah. You know, yeah. Once, you, once you start to separate things, then you put things into little little pockets and areas. Then you got you got you got little targets. But everyone gets on with each other, and um, it, it, it's not a problem. But fortunately, there are individuals out there who, who, who like to target people. But those yeah. are the sad, the sad people. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm sure those in, are in the minority. You know, it's those people that need to be um, highlighted and stick out like sore thumbs, not the people who matter, you know. So, yeah, good question. Awesome. Um, and then here's more <laughs> of a thing about yourself. If you could change one char characteristic about yourself, what would you change? Hmm. What would it change? Characteristic wise, that's a very good question. I'm thinking I'm thinking fairly unique. Uh, <laughs> I'm thinking fairly unique as a as an individual. I'm fairly driven. Uh I I don't know to be honest with you. I'm fairly comfortable in my own skin. So 
Awesome. Uh, I can't think of anything really I'd like to change. You know, <laughs> well, I lost my hair when I was in my 30s. <laughs> but uh, it is what it is. You know? <laughs> it's what it is. You just have to accept it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, for yeah. sure. But if, if I had the ability to change something about myself, um, I would be less forgetful because I can be very forgetful. <laughs> Oh, well, forgetful, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then here the final question: uh, What's some advice you yeah. would like to give to uh, musicians? Just generally, ge just general musicians. Yeah, yeah, or drummers. Or any, like, yeah, just generally. Um, just generally. It's it's a lot. It has become a lot harder for um, even though we have the internet now. It's still it's it's still very difficult. The business has changed a huge amount uh, in the last twenty years, twenty five years. It's changed a massive amount, and it, it is it's more difficult uh, to uh, get yourself um, uh, a fa you know build a fan base up to get out there playing. Uh, that is really the only way you're going to do it is by being out there and getting in the live environment, you know, whether you're playing a local jam session or you're uh, going to a, uh, a bar or a pub somewhere and getting up doing karaoke, it doesn't matter. It's about being out there and being seen, really. Uh, and I would say that um, uh, pick an instrument up if you're really if you really want to pick that instrument up don't get into playing if yes get into it for a bit of fun it is fun at the end of the day you know don't get into it expecting to uh, become uh, rich and famous because the chances are that won't happen uh, get into it purely for the fun element and, enjoy. and enjoyment of it all so you know it's got to be fun and, uh, you know, 30, 40, 50 years down the line, if it's still fun, and you're still doing it, then uh, all the better. You know, I, I know a few people who, have, who who gave up along the way and they regret it. They, they, they were uh, playing for 10, 15 years and then circumstances changed and they put their instruments away and never got them out again. And, uh, they, you know, seeing them 10, 15 years after that even, uh, they always regretted the fact that they, they gave up. So that's another thing. Don't give up. You know, you just got to keep going and going and going and do the best you can. At the end of the day, it's a, it's a brilliant thing to have uh, to be a musician. Any art, art form is fabulous. And I think what, when, when you're creative as a musician, uh, you, you know, you, you can leave a, a legacy behind. It's a, it's a fantastic way of leaving a footprint for yourself. So right. if you can record, record even one song, you can record one song. That's one song that will will be there uh, for eternity. Yeah. You know, and it's someone that it's someone will always be able to go back to and refer to. Uh, you know, it's like a it's like a piece of artwork. It's like a dance routine. It's anything as long as it's captured. Uh, and I think that that's a crucial thing. You know, don't don't not record something for posterity because you know it's it's worth it. It's like it's, it, you know. You must do that, no matter what your skill level. That's awesome. So yeah, it's about a legacy for yourself. Yeah, yeah that's good advice. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything yeah. you would like to add so, to the interview? Yeah. yeah. Um, no, I, I mean, I think I think you know I've got a single coming out, uh, yep. April twenty third. Uh, be nice if people could could um, could maybe. Uh, purchase that it's only uh, it's very cheap <laughs> it's, uh, it's only one song at the minute but we, we have plans to uh i won't give too much away but there are plans with the, with that track so awesome and i think the video is due out uh, maybe a week or so oh. after, a week or so after that uh that's another uniqueness about it is the fact that uh because the players on there are all scattered around everywhere you know i think the, the keyboard players out in canada uh, I'm in the UK and Bernie Tome, unfortunately, is not with us anymore. Uh, so, so that the the video just focuses on myself, uh, and I think that's quite unusual to have a promotional video with one instrument in it. 
Yeah. Uh, and I wrote the lyrics for it, which was quite proud of. You know, I don't know if you've heard it yet, but um, I've been quite pleased with it. But it took it took about four years to put together. Uh, so there's a lot of effort gone into that one one song. You know, but there's some good things that happened uh, during lockdown. A lot of people have got themselves together, and uh, and uh, it's been quite productive for a lot of people. But uh, yeah, that's that's it really. I think uh, music is a fabulous thing to to get involved with, and I think as long as you um, you're passionate about it and you enjoy yourself, I think uh, you know you can't go you can't go wrong really. Just enjoy what you're doing. For sure, I agree. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, hopefully, we'll be over in Holland again at some point soon. Yeah, we'll definitely have to meet up then. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I'll let, I'll let you know. <laughs> Sounds good. Uh, and to everybody watching, thank you so okay. much for watching, and we'll see you guys next time. See ya. Okay, thank you. All right, all right. Oh, it just seems to be to be the light. You again, you again. I know you're coming later, Tim. Listen up, listen up.